Well, we haven't been uh, in the tasting room for quite a while. It's been a little bit of a lull. It has been. That's so um, what better way to get back in than kind of get back to uh, our roots, our love of coffee. And, uh, That's where but, it all started. But tying in uh, something that also happens a lot of times in beer, some barrel aging, which okay. is, I thought, very unique. We both thought that was kind of crazy. Barrel aging coffee? Yes. 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 Very odd. It seems. Uh, is it, I can't remember. Is it the green or the roasted? It's, it's green. So okay. I read a little. Yeah. So they right. actually, it's it's the green coffee that they uh, age in a barrel, and uh, roast it. And it's here at our table for this. Give it a shot. I'm Andrew, and I'm Keith, and we are about beverages.com. And the beverage we are about today is some coffee. What is it actually? It's, it's uh, is from it? modern times. Okay. Uh, it is a uh, Colombian okay. that they have barrel aged in uh, Madeira wine barrels, which is like a fortified Portuguese right. wine. It's like a port. From the actually the island of Madeira, I believe. Yes, that's yes. correct. Yeah, from the islands of uh, Madeira. Yes. That's what they uh, have done. Yeah, so they take the green coffee uh, and they put it in the barrels. Uh, I'm assuming that they rotate them almost like you would like a cask of any other kind where you're trying to make sure that you get different concentrations of right. you know, the beans touching the wood and that type of thing. I don't know that for a fact. I'm just kind of making an assumption. But well, you're a coffee, you're, you're a roast master. That's, that's probably that's what, what you would do. would do. That's what I would do. <laughs> <laughs> so that's I'm assuming they do. did the same thing. Uh, and uh, yeah, so then after that, they said that you can, I was reading uh, their blog post, which will have a link uh, to their website at aboutbeverages.com. And uh, in the original blog post, when they started doing this, they've done this with several things now. They actually have a bourbon uh, aged uh, coffee right now. They've done tequila barrels. They've done different. So they've done a bunch of these, and it's very limited. Uh, if you're part of their coffee club, you are guaranteed that you'll get one of those in your coffee uh, monthly membership. If oh, you're wow. not, okay. then it's kind of like you get on a little bit of a list. You know, they announce it as soon as it's available, and it's first come, first serve. When it's gone, it's gone. Now, are they actually roasting this? Well, they in-house? do. They roast their own coffee in house. Wow. So a roast, a roastery, yeah, and a brewery. As they say on the side, that's like heaven. They say, uh, where is it? We're one of the only breweries in the world to roast our own coffee in-house, or are we one of the only roasteries to brew our own beer? Either way, it's pretty neat. It's that's very and cool. That's pretty funny. That's what I've thought you should suggest to Denny for years. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Start brewing. Yeah, some, our uh, buckle beer. needs to start doing the exact yeah. same thing. Start our brewing beer. beer. We yeah. could do the small batch. We could do the reverse. A lot of coffee, a lot of coffee. and a little bit of beer, as yeah. opposed to a little bit of coffee and a lot of beer. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so they they say within two to four weeks they can already start tasting the infusion of the barrel into the coffee just because of the porousness of the green beans that are slowly taking out some of what's in there from what they've said. So they, aged this, they aged this longer. They don't really say specifically. It seemed like three to six months okay. from what they said. But within a short period of time, you can already start tasting some of that change. So they've put green coffee in the barrel. Correct. And they've waited a certain period of time. Yep. Taking some out, taking a little bit out, roasted, a little sample roast, and they say and they can already taste the at, difference at a certain between, pe- at a certain point. Right. Okay. Um, so anyway, yeah. Let's just. Uh, oh, uh, so price wise, so this is uh, this. I believe, yes, it was fourteen dollars for eight ounces, half a pound for a half a pound. Wow. Okay. So it's not cheap. No, it's not cheap. But uh, I wanted to splurge. I wanted to try something different. And good. It, like I said, it got yeah. me excited. Well, we really like Modern Times beer. So we do uh, love their beer. So this is a fun. Their tie-in. marketing is great. Love all. Like I said, if you're not following them on Twitter, you should be because they're like I said, very humorous and always letting you know what barrel aged things and different things they got going on in their tap rooms. If you're in the California area, um, I have already tasted this. Okay. I brought this to actually down to Arbuckle. Everyone down there tried it. We've already kind of formed some of our opinions. Okay. So I want you to kind of, I don't want to influence anything. So I've still got beans left in there. You can take a look. Uh, like I said, obviously smell as well. And then I already ground the coffee, which we'll do in French press, because that's the best way to brew coffee at home is in a French press. That is some light coffee. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's very light roasted. I don't know if that's because they found roasting it darker that you would lose out on some what you've imparted into the bean but yes it's it's very light so i would smell say it now smell in the bag probably first. look i did okay. so we're probably looking at probably um excelsor beans right i wouldn't think there's a supremo no it does not say but i would think so just, yeah just, they're just, definitely just not judging by the sun. yeah i don't think there's a supremo and they that doesn't mean anything uh, most no of it's what just I, but it is an indicator of what yeah of what was harvested or what was separated I get a little bit of chocolate. Yeah. And a little bit of under roasted coffee. <laughs> <laughs> um, huh. Okay. You can leave that out there if you want. Okay. Get those. I get uh, 
milk chocolate. Yeah, it's spe- a lighter Specifically, chocolate. like a milk yeah, chocolate, because yeah, yeah. uh, it's almost a little creamy. And then I get, besides the light roasted coffee, I got a little bit of some sort of fruit, like a cherry or something like that. And now I bought this, gosh, it's probably been about six weeks ago now, maybe even two months ago. Stored it. I've had it stored in the freezer since we, like I said, I've tasted it fresh. So it's just the way to do it. Yeah. And like I said, then, yeah, stored it in the freezer, which is the way to store your coffee that you're not going to use for a little bit amount of time because I knew we were going to keep it for this. And you can't even buy this anymore, it looks like. They may have another run of it come around, but as of right now, there's no like roast, roasted on date uh, or they anything. They did or was have, was where, uh, roasted on April 14th. Oh, okay. And you probably received it. I received it about a week after, after that. I want to okay. say the twenty first, twenty fourth, something. Pretty fresh. Yes, I did. Yeah, it was very fresh when I got it. So. Yeah. All well, right. There's a little. So now you've smelled that. Now go ahead and switch over to the grounds. There's still a little bit of the chocolate. Yeah, uh, but but it's less. But it's definitely less. And right. There's, and there's not. I get the light chocolate. Then I get a little uh, bread crust. Uh, like bread crust in there. Um, there's a light bit of uh, some sort of spice, and then the fruit is still in there, wow. but it's it's changed. And now, like I so said, this is kind of what I also remembered from when I we initially got it. It went from being like that cherry fruit in here to this almost was like a hint of blueberry, wow. almost like an like a See, this like is... a blueberry. Mu- like I so said, there's a little bit of that going on in there, and I, I would say that it is less than when I had it okay a while back like i said there were some more, little more nuance but i'm still right. getting some of that in there well see you are you do this on a weekly <laughs> on an almost daily basis you still drink what i roast though i do you still but, you still yeah, get needed, but, I but yeah you, you're not tasting every day no. yeah there's a bit there is definitely uh yeah i get that i just got it, that uh, on that one whiff but not the next one and not any before i did get it i did get some blueberry in there yeah i would definitely just a, i would you, okay. definitely agree with that and because actually when we smelled it then we went to uh the mocha sadamo that we have yes. at work right now and that's got that has a really strong whiny yeah fruit yeah little hint of blueberry characteristic which is awesome um like i said we've that one's that one's been super consistent for a while now. man i love that coffee like that is just yeah, mom so got good. me some of that. I had I had a cup of that the other day. That's just world good. class, just because it's a little bit, you know, just a little different. That's a great yep. blender too. Um, all right, so we are now going to uh, through the magic of time. We're going to take a pause. We are going to go brew this, and then we will come back and uh, let you know what we think of what happens in the cup. Do you want to go over like I said? So this is, uh, it's I guess it's technically a thirty ounce French press or what or thirty two or something like that. I, I measured it out. I'm gonna be using twenty four or twenty five ounces of water. Okay. So then I've done the appropriate amount of grams of coffee. Coffee. All right. That I've already got broken down there, which is based on the ratio of hundred grams of coffee per sixty four ounces of water. So then whatever amount of water you're gonna use, you can break down and do the math right yourself and, and figure that out. Break it down. Break it down and now we're going to go brew it up. Okay. All right, so we have uh, finished making our French press coffee. We're going to plunge. Good. We're going to plunge. Boiled uh, your water. We did did yep. a little coarser grind. Yep. Two minutes of steeping. Start up the grounds. Start up the grounds. Two you more minutes. A little uh, yep. aromatic investigation. L- ooh. Did you come up with anything? Anything else? Or about no, what we've been it was okay. about where we were. About where we were at. Okay. Yeah. That's kind of what the I figured. The break was just a little... I don't remember that one being a little bit of bread. Too different either. Yeah. Just like I said, the lighter, the lighter roast. A little bit of bread. What what song in particular was it? Aubrey or was it? Uh... Make it with you. Okay, it was. Oh, All right, that works out well. Since we just coffee. made some coffee, I know. I definitely get that the fruit though. There's some fruit now coming out more. This is so. I'm kind of glad this has happened. This is exactly when we actually brewed it at Arbuckle when we were all tasting it. Right. Uh, the owner, like I said, some other people I work with. Um, it was it was exactly what we were smelling. It's like as you go through the process, it's like things go this way. We at first it was like you even said more chocolate. Don't yeah. really get a lot of anything else. Right. I said, well, as a little hint of fruit, but mostly yeah. chocolate. Okay, now it's kind of evened out a little bit, and then now it's like the fruit's coming through. The fruit part, still getting yeah. the chocolate. But it's like every the slowly but surely with through every step the fruit kind of keeps making its appearance. Yes, a little bit more yeah. known. Yeah, it's more pronounced. It's the prestige. But it's not as blueberry though. It's something else. It's I don't know. It's it's. Uh... 
It's it's berry of some sort. It's though. a dar- yeah, yeah. It's a darker. Yeah, it's it's one of the darker berry. fruits. Yeah. Maybe a, it's not quite a raspberry either, but it's like it's like a, I want to say it's more of a blend. I'd like to taste this coffee not aged as well, side by side. Just to yeah, see what it could, yeah. That would that would have but, been that would have been interesting. But uh, I want to say that that not when I got this, but there was some comment uh, in their writings for when talking about this. They're like, and hey, if you actually have some of the original, you can try them side by side. Oh like, right. Like so, at one point they sold this without it being aged. Right. Okay. But anyway, so time to taste. So now before we see anything in the comments, we haven't done coffee in a while, so we probably should explain why we're slurping before people are like, oh, yes, God, if you're not familiar so, with this. If you're not familiar with yes. this or like I said, this the being process. Like, the process of this whole thing. Uh, there's two reasons. Main reason, one, it's hot, so it's we're trying to aerate. Uh, aerate it a little bit, cool it down a little bit. And the other reason is you're kind of, not kind of, you are getting it to go everywhere across your entire palate. Right. Your soft palate, your tongue everywhere you want to get a nice even spread as much as possible so that you can light up all those different flavor sensors in there and right. see exactly where where it hits where it doesn't hit uh you just get a lot more a lot more information that way it can be sent to your brain when you do a thinner coating of all of that so that's the reason that we do that and that you should do that too you don't have to constantly drink your coffee that way no but on your first couple of sips if you've never had that coffee before yeah like anything like i said it's kind of it's kind people, of people nice. it's, it's an attention grabber they'll mm-hmm. people look at you and you go hey it's okay it's okay. i know what i'm doing um, it's, like, it's a free country it's a, yeah hey i know i know i know i know the uh there is a, a nice whininess about it uh, it really h- lights up the well as in the coffee business, the sour bar, uh, in any business actually, but spe- specifically yeah. coffee. If you, when you start getting into beer, that's a different whole game, a whole different game. But definitely, uh, to me, lights up the sour bar. Kind of goes down on the side of my mm-hmm. tongue. Then yeah, a little salty, um, a little bit. Kind of almost makes my tongue actually because of the sour. It almost brings it uh, my tongue around a little bit. Yep, and it does. Yeah, makes my mouth water a little bit. Yeah, it's thin, but. At that sort of roast temperature, I would expect that. You're not going to be getting a lot of body you're not, out of even, that. Even out of a French press, you're not going to be getting that. But uh, I'm surprised at the, um, I guess, lack of under-roast flavor in there. Yeah, there um, still is some. There's still there's some. There's definitely a little bit of a green roasted flavor in there. Right. Like that apple kind of comes through a little bit along with the other fruit wine component, uh, which I think is more because of, like of that roast being that light, which always just kind of makes me wonder... I wonder if if you pushed it any further, would it just roast out the other nuance that we are getting, and you wouldn't get any of it anyway? Or could you get more toward a slightly darker roast profile, which is what we've been accustomed to and right. what we've worked with for so long? Right. Uh, you know, something get a little oil development at least. I mean, at right. least get into the you know little darker temperature. You know, right. like I so said, you don't have to go French roast or even a strong medium roast. You could just get just start pushing the boundary a little bit to get a little oil development, right. maybe a little more body to it because i right. think that would be good because especially when i think of a port wine i think of a little more body i think of a little more you know i don't think of something this thin the madeira so i think that yeah. would just add to the whole construction yeah. of it but so now but, but overall i was surprised at how smooth it was too for yes. being a lighter roast yes. coffee like this usually that gets you know kind of crazy and wild and like oh my you know tongue is getting you know kind of acidic and then oh it makes my stomach feel a little funky too you know all those, all those things, it, like I said, and overall, this one did not, and you still got some of the some flavors as well. So the the contrast of the color of the bean to the ground coffee, are you are, you, are we thinking drum roaster here? Probably. I guess we could probably ask them. Because you know, honestly, it's a lot. I, I, it's a lot lighter ground, and usually that means that the inside just isn't as developed. Yeah, I I thought uh, I want to say it's e- very evenly roasted though. The color of the beans is even. Oh, gosh, I want to say they said what type of roaster it was, and I want to say it it was a um, oh biscuits. I can't I can't remember Dietrich. Pro yes, Bat. thank Dietrich. Okay. I want to say that it's a Dietrich roaster, but okay. which is a drum, uh, one right. of the better drums because it's at least a little bit. The heat is uh, they usually use more of a uh, not direct heating, okay. so you don't get that super like it used to be like older drum roaster. It was like the Super dark, right? You get the light. black bean and yeah. light, and you get this crazy profile. But this right. is because yeah, how they roast. So they're the so they're doing a lot better. But it's still, yeah, where you get more roasted on the outside than the inside, just because of the method. Like I said, right? Arbuckle uses a different method. Which, if you're interested, I'd be more than happy to talk about that at some point. But yes, but yeah, we use a much different method that gives a lot more even heating to the bean, cause it a little more of a baking to it, which I think helps make for uh, a more even profile as well. But yeah, I was I was very happy with it. 
interested to, I, it made me interested enough that I want to try some of their other ones too at some yeah. point like I said I, when I saw the bourbon one today I was like ooh that might be kind of interesting I'd like to try something like that so it'd be good just to try just a regular coffee blend from them like a either a dark roast or, yeah. or try a, a single varietal uh, at, a, at a full city or something just to see you know what that, yeah what it's what what how they how they treat their full city roast how they treat their how that how that tastes normally but yeah they have the well, yeah. the blend that they use in their stout their black house stout which ties into next week um maybe the blend that they use in that you can actually buy and it's a blend of sumatra and ethiopian okay so that would be an interesting one to try because then that's one you can also then see how it translates into the beer, what flavors you're getting out of it. Yeah, but. no. Cons- g- given the like I said, the the light roast, given what I'm used to coffee wise, um, there yes, there are. I do get the under roasted notes. That's more more front of my yeah. palate. Mm-hmm. Um, but the other flavor uh, profile is nice. Actually, that like I said, that sort of whiny, kind of uh, sour sour bar light up sort of flavor yeah but then finishing pretty like it doesn't linger yeah. it's not like yeah. a sour that really yeah then it makes around. your mouth water it was a, a very nice yeah it was a yeah. very nice nice flavor and that was uh pretty much the consensus that we had as well that's right <laughs> that was the consensus that we had uh, at work as well was that same thing like oh i'm surprised for how light this was yeah. the whole way through that you got like said some of those other flavors so yes. yeah definitely it would worth would be worth another try Absolutely. and uh hopefully uh you've not just only seen us here on YouTube, but if you've gone to our website at aboutbeverages.com, uh, you've seen many of the other things that we have there as well. Um, sometimes articles, sometimes uh, a little other news things that we've written about. Uh, that's usually where we'll let you know what our upcoming shows are going to be. So we'd appreciate it if you uh, check that out, as well as following us on Twitter. Do we still have uh, a Facebook page? We do still have a Facebook page. We update that. Oh, do you? Yeah, okay. it updates. All right. Yeah, yeah. All right. I wasn't not, sure. Not, not as much because I'm not as much into the... I don't have a personal Facebook page, so right. it's just kind of updating that. No, itself. I was just curious. But a lot, like I said, we're both pretty active on Twitter. We enjoy that quite a bit, being able to say things we've tried, taking pictures and, right. and other stuff. So that's definitely... And untapped, if uh, you are in the beer world and uh, enjoy doing that as well, follow us, follow us there as well. But whether we like it or not, you should... Give it a shot.